Around 11,000 years ago, humans began to domesticate animals for work, companionship, and food, changing what were once wild creatures into the domestic versions commonly recognized today. But what those animals looked like before humans started tinkering with them is often shockingly different than what we're used to seeing. So today, we're going to take a look at what animals looked like before humans started breeding them for food. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other farm-fresh topics you would like to hear about. Okay, put on your genetic engineering hats, because it's time to make a bigger burger. Modern cattle breeding techniques began in the 1700s, when a British agriculturalist named Robert Bakewell worked to create cattle with a greater output of meat and muscle than his local breeds. Those breeds included the wild cattle of Chillingham, which sounds like something on a summer reading list rather than a source of delicious beef. While Bakewell may be a personal hero to burger lovers the world over, he's less heroic if you're a cow, because as a result of his efforts, beef cattle have had what might be the most shocking transformation of any bred animal. For example, modern Belgian blues are bred to produce twice the usual amount of muscle seen in beef cattle, just really hulked out cows. And they're just one example of cattle being mass produced for sheer size. In fact, small cattle farms are fairly rare these days, having been almost completely replaced with large, freakazilla factories where the cattle are kept in small confines, where disease spreads more quickly and health risks are maximized. Dairy cattle have, unfortunately, seen similar changes, with farmers selectively breeding for larger udders and higher milk production. After all, you need to make enough cheese for all those burgers. Most sheep breeds are thought to have descended from a wild European sheep known as the mouflon. Huh, guess that particular sheep was really popular with the ladies. It probably wore sunglasses and drove an impressive car with terrible gas mileage. In actuality, we have Robert Bakewell to thank for that. Yes, the same guy ultimately responsible for the hulkamaniacal size of modern cattle also bred mouflon for both meat and fiber production. Many sheep raised today are raised for both their milk and for different varieties of wool. In fact, experts think this multifunctionality, as well as their ability to adapt to local environments, are the reasons why sheep have been so essential to agricultural production through the ages. They're the can-do kind of livestock. On the other hand, reports say lamb and mutton consumption in the United States decreased significantly after World War II. The reasons behind that drop are both environmental and social, but sheep farmers in the modern day are mainly focused on wool and other byproducts over meat, so it hasn't really been all that huge a deal. The sheep probably bought a side of relief, though. Goats were first domesticated by humans around 9,000 years ago. Just look at them. Who wouldn't see one of those and immediately take it home and name it? We'll figure out a job for him later. In fact, goats are among the first recorded domesticated animals in history. Today, there are hundreds of goat breeds around the world, and the domestic breeds are raised for both meat and fiber. Breeds like the Angora goat are highly valued for their mohair coats, while African breeds like the Boar goat are bulkier and raised exclusively for meat. Yeah, look at that buff goat. You don't make a coat out of that guy, you make burgers. No word on which breed of goat is the goat, or the greatest of all time. Probably one of the ones you can eat and wear. Modern day domestic pigs are almost unrecognizable from their ancestors. Ancient pigs had wiry coats that were dark brown, gray, and black in color. Plus, they had formidably long tusks. These fierce looking oinksters of the past were most likely domesticated 9,000 years ago in Asia. Meanwhile, today's farm raised pigs are a non threatening shade of pink, the same reassuring color as raw bacon, which it technically is. They also lack tusks and are considerably larger. And it's not one specific genre of pig. Pigs of all breeds have been bred for mass food production, yielding tender and fatty meat. In fact, the Austin Chronicle reported that raising pigs for pork has been popular since Christopher Columbus's time in North America. According to the paper, the trend back then was to develop herds that produced higher numbers of offspring but leaner pigs, to stretch feed efficiency. Husbandry methods emphasized control of diseases caused by the pig raising techniques used in huge factories, introducing the use of prophylactic antibiotics. As a result, pork has steadily become the other white meat and is one of the more popular protein selections at mealtime, although beef and chicken are still the top dogs, or figuratively speaking. 
According to the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, turkey raising may well be one of the oldest forms of organized meat production in the Northern Hemisphere. Considering there weren't many McDonald's or bologna factories back in the olden days, this is probably true. Native American groups reportedly domesticated wild turkeys long before European colonists arrived. Evidence of turkey domestication as far back as 25 CE has been found in Arizona, and evidence also shows turkeys were being raised in Mexico and Central America for at least five centuries before the Spanish showed up. The point is, people in the Americas have been raising turkeys for the table for as long as anyone can remember. And given that excessive and long-term domestication, turkeys are among the best examples of how humans have inflated farming animals like meaty balloons over the years. For example, we know that in the 1930s, the average weight of a turkey was around 13.2 pounds, but by 2014, it had more than doubled to 29.8 pounds. There have been claims that the vaguely terrifying size evolution was achieved using growth hormone injections on the turkeys, because, duh, no creature doubles in size in 70 years without either a magic spell or several trips to a shady sports medicine clinic. But the FDA has prohibited the use of growth hormones and poultry since the mid-20th century. And according to experts, those injections were never used in turkeys anyway. So it's apparently just good old-fashioned breeding. Can you hear us winking? Human beings have really done a number on the noble chicken, but it's their fault for being so tasty and so suited to a nugget shape. Chickens have been domesticated since 2000 BCE, and all the different types of modern chickens – molted, white, original recipe, etc. – are descended from just four species found in the jungles of Asia. But unlike those humble jungle birds, today's chickens are bred to suit the needs of mass production. Though their meat-producing cousins are the ones who have been bred to have larger bodies, egg-laying hens have also ended up with much larger bodies and much larger eggs than their predecessors. The first selective breeding of chickens was practiced for the purpose of weaning out diseases, as was the case with many other species of domesticated livestock. But farmers soon realized they could use the same methods to maximize the output of the hens. The goal then became to develop super chickens that rarely take breaks from egg-laying routines, not even a 30-minute lunch. As a result, each modern hen lays around 200 eggs per year. That probably already sounds like a lot. That's an average of more than one egg every other day, which sounds exhausting. But here's the real shocking figure. For comparison, wild or roaming chickens lay only a handful of eggs once a year. Man, we really did a number on them. Chickens bred for meat are known as broilers, because that's where they're headed, baby, right? Why else would we call them that? That probably does a number on the chickens, too. It's hard to live a fulfilling life when you're named after the way you're gonna be eaten. Broilers generally have white feathers over their large, meaty bodies. And even though they're technically the same species, they look almost nothing like their Asian ancestor, the red jungle fowl. That's because while the FDA prohibits the use of added hormones in both pork and poultry, some birds have become so heavily modified through breeding they have trouble walking around with all their extra body weight. They're such beefcakes, or should we say poultry cakes, that they can barely move. These birds were genetically selected to grow bigger, particularly their breasts, because the breast is one of the most versatile and marketable parts of the chicken. And not because Purdue is planning to put together a swimsuit calendar. As a result of these bigger is better practices, chickens today are 80% larger than they were in the mid-20th century. Believe it or not, shrimp is the most widely consumed seafood in the United States, so it's a good thing Forrest Gump's army buddy wasn't super into clam digging. However, the shrimp is food seascape has changed a lot since the farming of shrimp began in Asia in the 1400s, when they were culled from small ponds and local ecosystems. In recent decades, farm sizes have grown exponentially, and modern technology is allowing farmers to produce much larger shrimp than they could find in the wild. Jumbo shrimp, if you will. However, as journalists and author of Real Food, Fake Food, Larry Olmsted pointed out, much of that shrimp is imported into the U.S. without inspection or even adherence to any regulations. And some reports hold that in seafood farms overseas, the creatures are pumped full of illicit substances designed to obtain maximum growth. Those rumors gained even more traction when several shrimp emerged as serious contenders in the home run race of the late 90s. 
A government accounting office review of seafood fraud was highly critical of the FDA's oversight of imported shrimp. It found that after the FDA banned the import of Chinese farmed shrimp in 2007 due to the presence of unapproved drugs, Chinese suppliers simply shipped the shrimp to Malaysia. There, the shipments were relabeled and millions of dollars worth of the drug-tainted shrimp were imported into the U.S. anyway. This happens with shrimp so often that there's an actual term for it, transshipment. Wait, why wouldn't they call it trans shrimpment? It's right there. Salmon have remained a popular food source for humans and bears alike. And in recent years, the fish have seen significant changes in its qualities, including its taste. This is because overfishing led to excessive farming of the fish, which then led to genetic modifications that could develop much larger animals and species in the wild. In true Frankenstein fashion, this tampering with nature quickly spiraled out of control in negative ways. Turns out, fish farms were breeding grounds for parasites and infectious diseases. Sorry, salmon fans. Also, those farmed salmon were being partly fed with fish meal and fish oil derived from ocean fish. In other words, the big farms weren't slowing depletion of the ocean, they were actually speeding it up. Today, the FDA is taking measures to test and approve salmon growing methods that will be safer for consumption, so that the size of salmon does not come at a cost of fish or human health. Well, it's some cost to fish health. After all, we're not breeding gigantic salmon so they can retire to a farm in their twilight years. We tend to associate Charles Darwin with the finches of Galapagos, but he also used pigeons to test some of his ideas about evolution. In fact, it was Darwin who discovered that all pigeons transcended from a species called the rock dove, which sounds like a cool-ass dove. That dove has a facial piercing. By Darwin's time, people in England were already selectively breeding pigeons for odd or beautiful traits, calling them fancy pigeons. That's how you know they're good pigeons. The fancy pigeons sported decorative feathers and came in a wide variety of colors, like iPod Nanos. Today, many countries no longer include pigeon on the menu, possibly because the birds are sometimes referred to as rats with wings due to their urban scavenging natures. Nonetheless, some people still keep them as eccentric pets. In North America, most people think of horses as sweaty cars with an ejector seat that might go off at any moment rather than a source of food. But the animals were actually raised for meat around the world for centuries. In fact, many countries in Europe and French Canada still consume horse meat regularly. And horses were selectively bred for many traits, depending on the region. Because of this, they now run the gamut from the miniature horse to the massive draft horse breeds like the Shire and Clydesdale, which is known for its deep and abiding love of Budweiser. Incidentally, the oldest known horse breed is believed to be the Arabian, which is squarely between those two extremes in terms of size, like the mid-sized sedan of the horse world. The Arabian is lean, known for its endurance abilities, and was an essential part of life for the nomadic Bedouin people. Being a rabbit is already a tough gig. You don't have much in the way of natural defenses outside of being adorable, and seemingly every other creature of the forest is constantly trying to eat you. Getting bred by humans only made the rabbit's plight more pronounced. Spain was the original land of rabbits, and when the Romans arrived in 200 BCE, they began to domesticate the small creatures for their meat and fur. While all 60 recognized domestic rabbit breeds are descended from the European rabbit, selective breeding has led to some variations that look extremely different from the rabbit's ancestors. For example, lop rabbits have much longer flopped over ears, while Flemish giants are the size of medium to large dogs. That rabbit is too big. There's the Angora rabbit, which is bred for its fluffy fibers, and the wascally wabbit, which has been known to wear costumes to deceive hunters. Rabbits were originally bred for meat and fur, but when people began moving to towns and cities to be part of the Industrial Revolution during the 19th century, they brought the little fuzzy-faced critters with them as pets. This is honestly the best outcome rabbits could have hoped for. As showing rabbits became popular, the evolution of fashion and social trends greatly influenced breeding, causing some rabbit aesthetics to change dramatically. According to experts, rabbits were the only farm animal to be practical to keep in town, so it became increasingly common among the rising middle classes to keep rabbits as pets. Many breed societies and clubs were established. And while societies and clubs sound very impressive, in all likelihood they were probably just the old-timey equivalent of pet Instagram. So what do you think? Which of these animal transformations did you find the most surprising? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other Weird History Food videos.